All right, any of you that have seen my previous videos with this uh, incrementer sled in it, um, know that I haven't really been happy with the way this whole uh, stop setup works and adjustment of it, and you know how they're just knobs are too small for your fingers, and they, you know, kind of get in the way like there. You can barely get on there and tighten them. And it also takes a tool to really fine tune it because it's. It doesn't slide, it just kind of locks in a, um, a rack and pinion type setup. So I, uh, you know, it was driving me crazy and I decided to uh, try switching out the, uh, the rail from my Craig miter fence using this uh, Craig type stop in one of my videos back a while ago. And I've been using it that way now for, you know, a couple weeks and... Here you can see um, by going that way it even gives you an extra half inch of supported cut. Um, but I've been using it that way for a couple weeks now and decided that I uh, I really you know like the way this setup works with it. And uh, the extrusion actually fits right on there. But I had to uh, get this back on my um, Craig miter gauge and uh, I decided to buy a new longer extrusion for this Incra sled. And there you can see I've already made a plywood uh, piece to put on it, sacrificial piece. And I did stick a T, a, um, a T track in there and a couple of uh, T nuts so it just slides on the new fence. So you can see it, um, this Craig fence actually drops right in place on here. Uh, the um, slots in the Incra miter gauge here are big enough to accept it and it just pops right off so I decided to uh, put that one back on this so I can use this again because I do use both of them and I did order a four foot piece of the Craig this uh, Craig extrusion here and I did I ordered it from Amazon and you know it cost a couple more dollars from them but I figured if there's any problem with you know twisting or not being straight or anything at least they'd uh, return it for me so it arrived in really good shape um, and actually I checked it as perfectly flat so and as you can see it fits on and here's that plywood fence board I'm not going to show you how I made it because it was just a matter you know drilling some holes for these uh, T nuts and just cut uh, using a dado head to cut a slot in there for a pocket for the uh, T track and I had a bunch of these little T nuts left over from my uh, router table build anyway I bought a bag of 25 of them really cheap and I put a coat of polyurethane on that fence so the holes that I drilled for the screw heads are really tight when I you know after a couple coats of polyurethane but just had to push them a little bit and this is you know the some button head screws go in from the front there and um, I got a little washer under them and then those T-tracks nuts go on the back there and they just slide right into the the Craig extrusion like that and I did put uh 10 of them every I put one every foot about on here so you know I'd have it it bolted on there good it's just a simple it's a sacrificial board so I can make a new one if I have to just a piece of plywood that you know takes half an hour to make so got that on there and then before I tighten it down I figured I'd double check that everything was you know perfectly straight and I figured uh it won't move once this is on there so you know everything's good to go and I started tightening from the center of it out and got that board mounted on there real good so it's, a, it's really um, an easy swap out and you know this is really just more of a personal preference to me I just like my uh, I like the way this stop works and how easy it is to actually um, adjust it with one hand and stuff like that and the only modification I had to make to the Incra was that little bracket there. I had to drill a hole an uh, inch and a half up from the, um, the face of it because the other one was a little bit tall. But it bolted in there and I checked the accuracy. Nothing changed. So, you know, we're all set to go. And um, I was pretty amazed when I put my straight edge on here. Everything was, you know, really pretty much perfect. And that lets me use this uh, Craig stop. So got to put a ruler in there and I just kind of set it up with the edge of the stop at the edge of the blade and got out my ruler now this is a uh, start ruler I bought the uh, Craig one like 10 bucks for the, the piece of measuring tape to go on there and I bought this 12 foot start one for a little over five bucks so 
and I figured that would work. It's a lot longer than I need, but they they had a four foot one, but actually the four foot one cost twice as much. So I just bought this longer one, and I figured you know I just throw the rest away. So it's a you know it's a really nice metal tape that goes on there, and it's got a self adhesive backing on it. So all I had to do is I you know I marked a zero point there, and now what I'm going to do is uh try to get this started at the zero point and you know there I needed 39 inches of it so it cuts with a scissor pretty easy even though it's metal and this all here is really waste unless I can figure out something else to do with it and there's a nice uh, self adhesive backing on it and the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you get this started straight with the track because you can't twist it or move it later and you want it centered in that half inch groove there and it just fits in there perfect so I got it um, you know once I got everything nice in a straight line there and got the uh, that zero down in the right spot it was an easy job to just kind of peel the backing off and slide it right into place then I just went back and um, did a final zeroing on that little red pointer on the built into the fixture there and there it is it's a uh, it's nice and accurate and um, as long as you hold that clamp to the back you just pull that screw to the back it keeps everything uh, accurate when you tighten it there is a little bit of slop in there so you, you know you just have to pull it back but it does work good once it's locked and there you can see I've got I can go out to 36 inches which I figured is uh, you know the max I really need on this and I can go about uh, seven inches to the right hand side of the blade too so that'll help when I'm doing stop tendons and stuff like that and I just set the blade to take a quarter in an inch and a quarter deep cut in it and I made my first cut to it there just to you know because that's what I'm going to be doing and I you know I, I never really cut anything more than an inch and a half so I'll be fine with this and there you can see that T-track is on the front there too and I've got, um, you know, provision there to put a stop in that I'll show you in a second. But basically, you know, that's what it looks like all together. And then here are the couple of stops I made too. Um, I used to use that Incra stop to clamp it down. And uh, it was kind of a pain in the neck because it took two hands. So I just took a couple pieces of nice ash that I had. And I uh, took the router, put a couple grooves in there so it fit nice and tight in those uh, tracks and I actually put sandpaper on one side for when I don't want things to slip and I left the other side smooth so I can use it for when I want to index cuts and there you can see what it looks like and I did put two little strips of UHMW plastic for it to slide on there and I did use a um, 5 16th t-nut in there but I had to grind a 16th of an inch off each edge of it and there you can see how the sandpaper wraps around and they're just, you know, both the same. It only took a couple minutes to make them. And, you know, they really will help. And it's a one-handed operation now. Because before I used to, um, to keep things from slipping and moving, I would use this clamp. And it, always, uh, it took two hands and it took a lot of time to do. So, you know, I just wanted something that was quick, simple, and uh, would do the same job. It, you don't really have to hold anything down on this sled. It's more just to keep it from slipping. So I don't need that anymore and uh, you know these two little blocks of wood and a couple T-nuts really um, they do work good uh, the sandpaper on them really does uh, keep things from slipping I'm, I'm real happy with that and they'll work at any angle also and then I made a uh, stop to go on there so I've got two stops now one you know one stop like that and the other one for the flip stop so I don't want to do you know double cuts or you know cut longer and then flip and cut to size and this was just the exact same block, but it was cut for a little wider T-slot because I used a Rockler T-track in there. And I just glued a piece of walnut on the front so I'd have a stop out there that uh, wouldn't collect sawdust or anything. You know, there'd be nothing built up on it. And put some nice big knobs on all these things so you don't have to, you know, worry about trying not being able to get my fat fingers in there. So that's, uh, yeah, that's my second set of stops here. And... Um, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it came out. It really, uh, 
I, I just like it so much better. The whole thing is a lot lighter to deal with and um, easier to use for me and much quicker. And the inker actually has the um, accuracy that I want. So that's what it basically looks like now. I call it my uh, Crin miter sled because it's half Craig, half Incra. And then I did put a piece on the side that I just showed you for um, storage. It turned out that uh, I wanted an easy way to just store it without, you know, having to carry it around and move it and stuff. So put that block of wood on there. I used the existing screw holes and just screwed down through them. And I actually put a screw down in the top with a hole in it so it can't fall off. And then just to get it on or off, it's just a, a two-second easy job and I don't have to go far. I just, you know, stand it up on the side there, hook it on, and... It's safely stored, and when I need it, you know, it's only a two-second switch over. So I just thought I'd share a couple of these mods, um, which I feel make this a uh, much better jig and uh, e a lot easier for me to use. And I'll probably take that old Incra um, got, or other extrusion and use that on my drill press. And then in the meantime, FedEx just dropped off a new saw for me, and I'll be doing a, a box opening review of this next week. Um, it's the biggest, uh, baddest metal cutting saw that Evolution has now, a brand new model. And poor FedEx guy had to carry it down my driveway that's uh, coated in six inches of snow now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.